I'm going to review the Fox Pro Spitfire Predator call. It's an electronic call that um, has a remote control so you can set the call a ways away from you and then use the remote to activate it and change the volume, mute it, and change different sounds. Um, this is the first time I've ever had a, an electronic call. I've used hand calls um, over the years, but I wanted to give this a try and see, uh, see what would happen. Uh, so I'll go over it real quick and then talk a little bit about uh, my experience with it this far. What I liked about the Fox Pro brand over some of the other brands was that it was a nice self-contained unit. It's water resistant and weatherproof um, and it's got a nice carry handle on it. So other than the remote, which I normally keep in my pocket, um, this unit is um, kind of self-contained uh, self in one unit. A lot of the other uh, types had uh, a unit that you had to hook up to a speaker and uh, had exposed speakers and they just didn't look quite as durable as these. Um, this here is the access panel. It's kind of difficult to uh, get into. I have to do it with my fingernails. I usually use a knife or a coin to get into it, but that's where the, uh, the batteries are located. Let's see if I can do it with this bullet. As you can see, it takes four... Uh, double A batteries um, and then there's another access panel back here and this is where the little uh, SIM card is at where this, the sounds are located when I first bought this the uh, card was popped out and I didn't realize that so I tried to use it and I was kinda of getting frustrated because I couldn't figure out why it wouldn't work but I had to push that in I'm not sure if that's how they all come the instructions didn't say anything about it so I had to figure that out on my own but once I got the SIM card popped into place, it uh, it worked fine. The controls are over on this side. Um, it's got an aux port, so you can operate that from the uh, control from the remote control as well. I don't have any auxiliary uh, items to hook up to it, but you can plug into that a uh, like a decoy that moves around. It might look like a rabbit or a foxtail or something, and it's supposed to uh, distract the predator and keep his eyes on that rather than wherever you might be located. But I haven't used that, so I don't know how well that works. This is the external speaker, so you can hook up multiple speakers to it. Um, and then you would turn that on or off right here. The power to the unit is right here, and it's got a handy indicator to let you know when it's on. Um, I actually wish they had put some sort of a cover over this, because I find that when I'm putting this in and out of my coat pocket or in a bag a lot of times it will slide on when I don't want it to be on so I ran down a set of batteries because I came back from hunting put it in my uh, my bag and didn't realize that I was turning it on uh, as I was sliding it in the, the button slid on so I might put a piece of tape or something over that that's one of the uh, the drawbacks of this unit I wish they had made that maybe a, a toggle button uh, that would be a little bit more difficult like a push button more difficult to accidentally turn that on and then the speakers out here. I couldn't find any information as far as how many decibels or what power the speaker actually is. Um, that is the other thing uh, about it is I do wish the speaker was a little bit louder. Um, these electronic calls like this with the um, remote controls can be uh, kind of expensive. I bought this one on sale at Bass Pro for around $130. Typically they sell for around $200. And this is the, the lowest model that Fox Pro makes. They make some that go up to $400 and $500. I always thought that was kind of ridiculous, but um, I might look into the uh, uh, speakers on some of their higher models and see if they're more powerful speakers. I'm not going to pay four or five hundred dollars for one, but I might look around and, and maybe someday look to upgrade if I can find a good deal on a on a good used one. Um, the range for the remote control um, is pretty good. It's about 50 yards. I find that if I go more than 50 yards, I can't. Uh, it doesn't respond to it, and that's if I'm on a flat surface. If I'm up in a tree and the and this unit's on the ground, then uh, I can get a little bit more range out of it. One other thing that I liked about this one was the simplicity of this remote control. You just turn it on, and then you can uh, toggle through the different sounds. There are 24 different sounds. There's a coyote locator, which is some sort of a coyote howler. I don't remember which which is which. I've used them all, but I um, can't remember which is which. This one's a uh, some sort of a coyote scream, a female coyote howl, uh, another coyote howl, a coyote pup scream, a coyote pup howl, a screaming gray fox, a juvenile red fox in distress, bobcat in heat, lightning jackrabbit, jackrabbit in distress, snowshoe, baby cottontail, this is one of the ones I use the most here in Kansas, 
adult cottontail. That's the one that I probably use more than anything else. Distress calf, white tail buck fawn, vole squeaks. I think it's like a mouse squeak. Uh, roaring red squirrel, prairie dog in distress, lucky bird, raspy woodpecker, panting red bird, raccoon fight, crow fight, and then coyote locator comes back around. The way it works, I'll uh, go ahead and demonstrate it here in just a second. Um, turn it on, and then once you select the sound that you want, you hold down the power button again, and it sends that uh, signal to the the actual caller, and it starts to play that sound. And then you can mute it with this button. And uh, when you mute it, it stops playing the, the sound. And then when you unmute it, it picks up right where the sound left off. And then you have the the volume control from one through up to five. And I'm going to go ahead and start out at one since I'm in indoors. This is the coyote locator. This next one is the Koi Male Challenge Stream. This one is the female coyote bark HAL 1. This is the long howl. This is the coyote pup scream. This is the coyote pup howl. This is the Screaming Gray Fox. That sounds an awful lot like a cottontail rabbit in distress. This is a Juvenile Red Fox Distress. This is a Bobcat in Heat. This one's a lightning jack rabbit. This is Jack Rabbit in Distress. This is Snowshoe. This is Baby Cottontail. This is adult cottontail. This is distressed cow. This is white tail buck fawn. Vol squeaks. This is a roaring red squirrel.
This is a prey dog in distress. This one's called Lucky Bird. This is Woodpecker. This is a Red Bird. This is a Raccoon Fight. There's a crow fight. And this is, I just put that on mute. And if I press mute again, it'll pick up right where it left off. One thing I have found is when I'm out using this, sometimes I tend to want to hold down the mute button thinking that I want to make sure it gets a signal. But when I do that, it I think it sends a mute signal and then sends another unmute signal. So you just want to press it and hold it for a, just a short period of time and then let off. Um, like I said, there's a couple of drawbacks to this that I, I don't like. I think the speaker should be a little bit louder. This button um, should be some, something a little bit less easy to accidentally turn on. And um, the range, I wish it had a little bit more range between the two units whenever... I wish I could put this, the, the actual speaker a little bit further away and be able to operate it um, further distance. But so far it has worked. Um, I've taken it out a few times and last weekend I was able to shoot a coyote. Um, and I'll put a picture up of the, of the one that I shot using this. Called him in um, after sitting out for about 45 minutes. This morning I went out again and I was in a much larger area. And um, I didn't think it was loud enough so I actually used this little hand call which is much louder. I'll go ahead and just demonstrate it real quickly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cup it with my hand and then open my hand up as I blow through it. It's very loud. That wasn't a very good uh, sound actually, but the harder you blow it and the louder it is, the more realistic it, it sounds. Um, and you can kind of bite down on this reed and as you move your mouth back and forward on it, you can get different types of sounds. Higher pitch if, as I move my mouth out further and then lower pitch as I move it up closer. One thing to note about this is it's called an open reed call. As you can see, the reed is, is exposed right here. This is the first time I've ever had an open reed call. Um, I've always used closed reed, which are the more typical looking. They look like, like a duck call. Uh, but the problem with the closed reed calls is once they get moisture from your mouth in the reed, they freeze up and they don't sound right or they stop working altogether. As you can see, this one's kind of translucent. It's got quite a bit of moisture in it from whenever I was blowing through it. But uh, because the reed is open, it will continue to work. So as far as hand calls go, this is going to be the only type I'm going to use in the future. Um, and this brand, I think it's a Ruffy Dog Junior Predator Quest. They make several different types. I bought this one. There were two other types. Um, I might try both of them as well. Uh, but this one worked this morning. I was able to call in a coyote uh, this morning. I didn't shoot him because he was too far away. And I think he caught my scent or saw me long before I ever saw him. So I took a shot. It was about 500 yards away. He was on the move. And I had a crosswind. So it was a fun shot, but I didn't get him. Um, I think the uh, little Fox Pro unit would have been... Um, wouldn't have called him in. It was big wide open area. I could see across uh, a valley with uh, mostly wide open for about 900 yards. And I just don't think that the sound from this thing would have carried far enough to call the coyote in. But the one thing I do like about the electronic calls is once you do have a coyote coming in, you can turn this on. It'll continue to call while you operate your rifle, try to get in position. You don't have to keep you know messing with the hand call, which could uh, cause some movement that the coyote will see. So what I'm going to do is probably use this whenever I'm in a big wide open area and try to use it for the distance and then maybe stop using it and turn this on and then try to get set up and wait for the coyote to come in. Or if I see a coyote, I'll turn this on and, uh, and wait for him to come in a little bit closer. So I hope this has been a uh, useful review for anybody who's considering buying one. Um, I think it's a overall pretty good unit and for the money I think uh, Fox Pros are some of the better electronic calls. Um, like I said, this is a very sturdy and simple to operate uh, remote control unit. That's one of the things that sold me on it. I didn't want it to be fumbling around with uh, switches and that sort of thing. This has got the kind of button that I wish this had. These are uh, covered and they have little uh, just push buttons and they're, they're kind of hard to actuate, which is good. You have to press them pretty hard to get them to actually work. But uh, once you do get them pressed down, then they, uh, they uh, 
respond. So I hope this was useful. Um, until next time, thanks for watching and uh, stay safe.